Hello, I am Shirshendu from ICMR National Institute of Epidemiology. I will talk to you on publication ethics. At the end of the session, I expect that participants will be able to recognize various ethical issues related to publication and make use of guidelines available from various national and international organizations for publication ethics. Before I start my main slides, I want you to throw some highlights on two issues. Number one is if you remember the life cycle of our research, how it goes on. It starts with identify data needs and then spell out research question. You formulate your study objectives, plan for analysis, and prepare data collection instruments, and then you go collect your data and analyze it, and then draw some conclusions and recommendations. Publication exactly fits at the end of this process or this life cycle. The second one is why to publish a research finding. Now, if I ask somebody, usually I get the answer is like it helps in career progression. Of course, that is there because you need publication for your promotion or getting through an interview. But if you think deeply, it allows us to communicate our research findings to our stakeholders. And when I say stakeholders, this includes your peer groups sitting across the world. In addition, the funding agencies and the common people also would like to see your results and your research findings. It identifies the research gaps and the future potential areas of research. Finally, it increases the responsibility to influence your practice because if it goes in the right direction, then your paper matters or your research finding can influence the current practice available. Unfortunately, postgraduate medical research in India often lack relevance of research question, may not address the local needs or sometimes have inappropriate design and methods and sometimes not accessible for others. Often you don't publish it and so it is difficult to find out your full report. But there are instances that postgraduate research can contribute to clinical practice and you can change your practice in field whichever you are working in. With this note, let's come to the main slides of today's topic. I have enlisted various components of publication ethics, but make sure that this list is not the final one. There are other issues related to publication ethics and sometimes few, some of these components are overlapping with each other. So, they may not be the separate entity. So, let us take a look at the components. Ethics review and breach of confidentiality, fabrication and falsification, authorship, plagiarism, ethics related to submission and conflict of interest. The first, ethics review and breach of confidentiality. When you are planning for a research, you must take the human and or animal ethics committee approval whichever is applicable as per the national guidelines. Also, you must take the informed consent or age appropriate assent whenever required because unless you have these two, none of the journals are going to accept your manuscript. If you are doing a trial, then you must register this trial with Clinical Trial Registry of India and you make sure that you are not disclosing the data other than people from your institution or which whoever have access to it based on your ethics committee review. There is a common habit that without institutional permission, some PGs used to share their work or the research work with people from other institution working maybe their friend, maybe somebody else for data analysis. But you must remember that these are not a good practice and this is unethical because unless you have your institutional permission, you cannot do this. You cannot disclose your information with outsiders. The second one, fabrication and falsification. If the research results not generated from the study, we call it fabrication. Or if it is generated by manipulating data, we call it falsification. 
these are extremely serious misconducts. If your research comes under any scrutiny for any reason, to defend that, you must preserve your data for sufficiently long duration either in paper form or in electronic form. I will share an example of falsification and fabrication with you. A final year postgraduate student came to me requesting to analyze his thesis data. He also asked if I could make some significant results, though they were not initially so. Participants, this is case I felt the student has done the study appropriately but failed to get a statistically significant result he was expecting. So he wanted me to manipulate the data to get his desired findings. This is falsification. Then curiously I asked how he has collected the data. To my surprise, he revealed that the data was taken from his senior's thesis. Now the whole game changed. I understood that he did not even do the study, either copied completely from someone else or generated the new data without even doing the study. This is fabrication. It is the responsibility of all the postgraduate students to be faithful with the research works while the mentors and the guides should rigorously encourage the students to conduct the study as per protocol make an analysis plan during the designing stage itself and maintain the same. Further, report the same results whatever you find. Falsification and fabrication happens not only at PG level or at our country, it happens everywhere across the world. But the most important issue what is there is breach of trust of common people because they trust you. You are going to deliver something they trust on it. And also you are losing time and other resources which you cannot do and that is absolute ethical breach. The third one, authorship confers credit, implies responsibility and accountability of your published work. Each author should be clear about their responsibility. It is mandatory to declare the contribution of each authors and this is mandatory nowadays before you submit your manuscript to any journal. Decide on authorship while writing protocol itself. That gives clarity and there is no ambiguity when, we do, when we, you do that right at the beginning. The International Committee of Medical Journal Editors recommends that authorship should be based on four criteria. The criteria are number one, substantial contributions to the conception or design of the work or the acquisition, analysis or interpretation of data for the work and drafting the work for revising it critically for important intellectual content and final approval of the version to be published and finally agreement to be accountable for all aspects of the work in ensuring that questions related to the accuracy or integrity of any part of the work are appropriately investigated and resolved. For example, if your editor is asking for some queries, make sure that the responsible person is accountable for answering these questions. The fourth one, ethics related to submission. There are issues with such things. For example, when one author is submitting the same manuscript, Simultaneously at different journals, we call it simultaneous submission and that should not happen at any point of time. You submit your manuscript to a journal, the journal gets back to you, the editor will reply back to you and you see what is the response from the editor. If it is accepted, then fine. If it is not accepted, they may ask a review for it. Again, review and submit. You do all those things and then you decide whether to be with that journal or to choose a different journal. A duplicate submission is defined as submitting a new manuscript with same hypothesis, methods, data, discussion and or conclusion which you have published earlier. You cannot do that. Also it happens that when you are writing a manuscript, you unnecessarily refers to your self-written manuscript 
published earlier. That should not happen. You also be careful about submitting your manuscript to a predatory journal. These predatory journals hardly peer reviews any manuscript. A list of predatory journals is given by University Grants Commission Consortium for Academic and Research Ethics. Follow those lists to choose your journals. The fifth one, plagiarism, is a very serious issue and I think the most commonly faced by everybody of us. It is defined as use of previously published manuscript by someone for his or her manuscript or unreferenced use of others published and unpublished ideas without consent, credit or acknowledgement. As I said, if you again look back the definition carefully, sometimes people think that it is only about copying and pasting. It is not just copying and pasting. In addition, even the idea if you take from someone without acknowledging, without his or her consent, that is a serious issue. There are various type of plagiarism like direct plagiarism when you copy from someone else work or self plagiarism when you duplicate your own previously published paper. And there is something called a redundant publication when with the same objective and hypothesis and research methodology you are using it for publishing as different different papers. That is called as salami publications. It should not happen of course you publish it as a single paper. To avoid plagiarism, avoid copy pasting. In addition, write the concept in your own words. You spend more time with your papers, with your references and literature to figure out what should be there and you figure out a new version of your draft. But don't copy paste. Acknowledge the original sources even it is unpublished work. Cite the reference accurately. You may use the reference manager for this. Avoid writing several articles of same type. That is the Salami publication. You can't do that. And to avoid the plagiarism, finally what you can do is use a software tools like Urkant, Authenticate or Turnitin. But as per, it should be as per the university norms because the university will have their own uh, criteria and own software what they are using or subscribing. The last one that is the conflict of interest is defined as financial, personal, social and other interests that directly or indirectly influence the conduct of the author with respect to the manuscript. For example, a PG or a researcher is conducting a drug trial which is funded by a pharmaceutical company. Of course, the outcome can be influenced by the pharmaceutical company. It is not just financial uh, conflict of interest. In addition, they may change the outcome of interest. So, make sure that you are identifying those conflict of interest. What you have to do is, you have to disclose such conflicts of interest during submission. And the readers will decide the influence of such conflict of interest on conclusion of the paper. Consequences of any research misconduct can be dealt with seriously. Committee on Publication Ethics describes the consequences. It depends on the type of misconduct which is major or minor. If find out to be a major one, even the author can be getting blacklisted by all the member journals. Also they can inform your institute and the institute can take action against it. I have summarized the existing guidelines related to publication for the academicians in Indian institutions. What should be the index agencies, what should be the type of articles and the authorship criteria which is required for your promotion and career progression. So I have summarized the checklist for publication ethics. When you are planning for publication, this starts right at the beginning when you start your work. You make sure that you get your approval from your ethics committee and you get the consent or the assent. When you are collecting data, you make sure that the data accuracy you have maintained. You have not done any falsification or fabrication of your data. To check plagiarism, you check with your university or the institution what they are using and you do accordingly but make sure that the plagiarism is not there or as minimum as possible. 
you make sure that you are submitting your manuscript to only one journal at one point of time. According to the ICMJ guidelines, you have maintained the authorship criteria and you have chose the right authors. And finally, you make sure that you disclose all the conflict of interest you have. Thank you.